Hi guys, it's high time a Muslim apologist called, I think it's Shabir Yusuf, gets cut down to size. Since I'm not going to travel all the way to London's Hyde Park and Speaker's Corner, which, I mean, it's a popular place to discuss anything you want, I came across a video where a brilliant and intelligent young man did this for me. I will use this example to show how dishonest, disingenuous, pathetic and uneducated this particular Muslim apologist is and what his preferred method of deception is. I will quickly summarize this using the analogy a guy, this guy called Sa Ra came up with to demonstrate the level of deception and the MO usually applied by this Shabir guy. So Shabir claims that he has a book which says there was a murder in Park Lane, a street in London. You check and there is nobody, no weapon, nothing. So you go back to Shabir and you tell him you went to Park Lane and there was no murder scene and nothing that would support his claim. Now this Shabir asks where exactly you were and you show him the street sign Park Lane and that you went left and right and looked on both sides. So now you demand evidence for his claim that there was a murder. Well, Shabir says you need to provide evidence that this was actually Park Lane and that the street sign was real and that the font used was in fact Bookman and not Calypso, completely ignoring the initial claim of a murder. This is the scenario and I will show this using the video where they try and talk to each other. Now this 51 minute video I watched was uploaded by somebody calling themselves Titan TV to YouTube. It is edited and maybe, I don't know, maybe some of the blunders by this guy Shabir were removed because I can see editing. So I'll have to make do what is available to me, which is bad enough, believe me, and sufficient to bury this guy once and for all. There was someone recording from the opposite side, but I think this was on behalf of Shabir, and since he got a good spanking here, I guess this will not appear on his channel. But who knows, I could be wrong about this. Unfortunately, there's something with the audio, because the booming voice of Jay Smith is all over the audio in the background, so it's quite tough at times to pick up what was said. So let's look at the historical context first, where a bloke called Moses or Musa appears all over the Quran. He is said to have received a book known as Torah, which according to the Quran contains guidance and light. Now this Moses dude apparently had a brother Aaron and a sister Mary, who in the Quran at least is the mother of Jesus, 1200 years ahead of what the New Testament claims. The Quran is also highly confused about other things, like where in chapter 7 it says the sorcerers believed Moses and his God, and chapter 10 says they did not. Now the Quran gets almost everything wrong here, as Moses allegedly grew up you know, in the home of something called Pharaoh, the title of Egyptian kings, namely the great house, the ruler's palace, the Pharaoh or and the Quran, as does the Torah, by the way, makes a mistake here, as the authors thought for some reason that Pharaoh was a name, not a title. It does not say, like, you know, King Henry or Henry, but just King. So, so Moses grew up in the house of King, whatever that signifies. Now, here in the real world, we have lists of the rulers of Egypt and its provinces, as well as their second in charge and the time of their reign. So, where's the problem? Now, one of these lists is a you know, list of names of 76 kings of ancient Egypt found on a wall of the temple of Seti I at Abydos in Egypt. And this is just out of sheer coincidence, one of the sole sources to date of the names of many of the kings of the 7th and 8th dynasties. So the list is valued greatly for that reason. There's no mention in the Bible or Quran which of the pharaohs the stories refer to. So that there's a huge problem assigning a date or timeline to this entire story, and um, there's no evidence of any of the claims made in the Torah or the Quran. None of nothing has been ever found. 
which makes the story a myth and a legend, a fairy tale, no more. And just as is the case for Jesus or Muhammad, there's no compelling evidence Moses really existed. You know, just like James Bond and all of them are well-known characters in a couple of books, movies and fairy tales, but not real people. And in the, in the case of Moses, there are several claims like, their sons he slew, a voice was heard from the hallowed ground, O oh Moses, very lie, I am Allah, the Lord of the world, and we told Moses by inspiration, strike the sea with thy rod, and you know, these are all claims. There's nothing more, it's just a fairy tale. This entire Exodus story, w were there 600,000 families enslaved in Egypt? Did they really steal what they could and then ran? Could they cross a muddy or uneven ocean floor which somehow had the water removed? Why is it <laughs> that not a single Egyptian soldier could swim when the water returned? Did over two million people really cross the entire Sinai and up the Jordan by foot? Is there any evidence for any of this happening? No. None. Nothing. So why claim it? Six minutes into the video, this is the point where this Shabir character comes in. Up until now, he's just been listening, pulling faces and pretending that he could do all this better. What is outright hilarious is the short ass next to him in his highly entertaining facial mimicry. So Shabir starts off with a childish and ridiculous lie where something can't be invalidated before everything has been checked. But if we have a definitively established everything, archaeologically or otherwise, about the subject matter, does it invalidate the claims? That's dumb. You, you simply can't claim there was a murder without some sort of evidence. You don't need to examine every ant individually to conclude ants cannot distinguish humans and speak Arabic. <laughs> but yeah, it shows the dishonest tactics at work here. And Sarah immediately spots it. He brings up above analogy I make a claim there where was a murder. there's a claim of a murder without evidence. No body, no weapon, nothing. Now can anyone or should anyone believe there was a murder in Park Lane when there is no evidence for that claim, for that murder? No, of course not. But this Shabir wants to shift the burden of proof and have the non-believer prove that something is not the case. It's a common tactic amongst desperate apologists. Now this Shabir starts his usual waffling about totally unrelated things. The only goal being is to use the word evidence as much as possible, whether or not it makes any sense or not. And this now continues with Shabir doing his best to make Sarah provide evidence against the claim, which is ridiculous. Shabir ignores all requests for rational and logical thinking and insists on investigating his strawman, the king's list in Abydos. That's how stupid this is. And Sarah again and again tries to bring this back to the original claim, to bring it back on track. But he gets derailed again and again, until it gets to the crux of the matter, and that is to suspend judgment until there is evidence, which would mean suspending belief in anything in the Quran. If we don't have all the available, available evidence about a certain event, then we cannot judge it either way. But, and that's another lie right here, Shavir claims he's withholding judgment on whether or not the Moses story is true until it can be substantiated with evidence. But he does not. He still propagates the story from the Quran as though it were true. You can't say, I don't know, and yes, it is true, all at the same time. It's a blatant lie. Because you're claiming an event with no evidence. Can I but finish? First of all. Can I finish? No, you're no, hang on. You're claiming an I'm event. Not. Yes, you are. I'm not. You're no, claiming the Pharaoh and Moses with no evidence. And here's the next lie. Yes, he is. He is making a claim without providing any, not even a shred of evidence. Nothing. And not accepting a claim without evidence is not the same as actively rejecting it. Even though we know 
that you can do exactly that. If the book claims it first, you have to prove it happened first. You don't, you don't come to me and say, oh, can you disprove it? No, that's not, that is not how it works in the court of law. That is how it works. No, it's not how it works because you made the claim. And this shows how unbelievably, well, stupid the Shabir actually is. All his glib and smooth talking is fake and it's just an act. He's useless. How can anyone honestly think that any claim can be made and it is up to the recipient of that claim to show the claim is not true? And until such time, it can be taken as being true. How, how childish, actually infantile and primitive is this? But this idiot manages to top this. Wait for it. But, okay, first, Sara correctly assesses the criminally disingenuous character of this pathological liar. It was quite logical. You're going around, you're, 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 you're using circular logic now. Uh, my friend, whatever you want to think, you're using you're circular to it, logic. But what I would suggest... But the thing is, you know you are, that's the thing. That's what's very funny, you actually know you're using circular logic and you're doing it, being disingenuous, that's what's very interesting to me. He tells him flat out that his story, the reasoning and his claims are circular. He tells Shabir flat out that he knows full well that he's lying, but instead of reconsidering, Shabir now even steps it up a notch. He starts off with the usual accusations of the other person being confused, afraid, <laughs> desperate, missing the point, you know, anything emotional. Uh, respectfully, of course. <laughs> and then, then he claims the story in the Quran is historical. He, he seriously claims that the Exodus story is a historical event. Now, historic and historical are two slightly different things, where historical refers to something that actually happened in the past. Has he established this? No. Has he demonstrated any of the claims? No. So what is he talking about? Why does he lie? Then the reasonable thing to do as a logical individual is to hold judgment until you have found the necessary evidence. Okay, and more waffling and then repetition and it actually gets quite comical when Shabir starts to feel the heat and he starts childish arguments and he starts babbling. There's no evidence of you. There's no history of you. There's nothing. So what are you talking about? Right. Shut your mouth until you find it. You know what? You are absolutely right. You should be shutting up because... You no, you should be. One second. You don't have all the evidence and that's the point I'm making. Okay. It is laughable to hear his stunning display of ignorance and bold deception. He really says, you don't have all the evidence and that's why you need to shut up. The evidence for what? He is making the claim, so he needs to provide the evidence. He can't, so he lies and deceives and tries to make the other person look stupid for not being able to provide evidence for some fabricated claim. It's always the same dishonest strawman fallacy he uses. And then he gets condescending and quite absurd. You missed the point again, and I'll repeat no. it very slow. I know it is difficult, isn't it, to understand? But anyway, mm. I said... Look, now comes the next bait and switch attempt. So, is it a historical event? The answer is yes. And it's another lie. No, it is a claim made in a fairy tale without any link to and with reality. It is not historical. It is there's, there's without evidence. There's, there's nothing. And then he follows it right away with yet another lie. We are discussing over what your claim is. No, you are not, you jerk. This is about the claim in the Quran regarding Moses and some Egyptian kings. Nothing else. Now, Sarah immediately picks it up and protests this bald-faced lie, exposing the standard Shabir tactics of making the other person have to provide evidence for something they never claimed. So, Sarah is smarter than this fool Shabir and quite rightly tells him in no uncertain terms to stop this. So, Shabir counters this with another lie, stating he does not need to lie, but he does. So, this is now 
a one lie per minute fest. No, no, no. I tell you what's not going to happen. Let me you're not going to try and flip it on me. You're no, no, you're not going to. No, listen, listen. You're not going to do that. You can, you can be eloquent, but you can eloquently say nonsense. You do understand that, right? I agree. I can hear it. Right. Okay. okay. But let's put it this way, Sarah. I'm saying to you, it's so simple to understand. Okay. You are making the claim. What is? No. You're making the claim. Let's stop this. Let's stop this. Can stop being disingenuous. Can yeah, but you make that No, let's stop this. You make disingenuous. No, stop being disingenuous, man. No, no. The snake in the grass will not stop his dishonest approach. Even though he's been exposed and his tactics are now out in the open, he stubbornly sticks to his script, again going for the sign Park Lane, or in this case the list of kings brought up earlier. Does he in any way explain how the fuck a list may be and possibly being bogus and wrong affects the claims in the Quran? Is, is, is this guy mental or what? Sarah is appalled at all this dishonesty and openly calls Shabir a liar now and explains why he calls him a liar. But of course, Shabir thinks this is not the case, even though he has done nothing but lie and deceive in this entire 25 years. Show me so the far. evidence. Sarah, can I no, because you're lying now. And, you're not, and I'm not going to allow that. Now it's even worse. You are accusing me of you're lying. Yes, said no, no. You lied and said, Sarah. I made the claim. Sarah. I didn't make the claim. Your book made the claim. And that's what me and this guy were talking about. Sarah. The book made the claim. So can we switch it now and understand yes. that? Who made the claim right. first? Sarah. No, who made the claim first? Sarah. No, who made the claim first? Uh, can I talk to you? Okay. If you're not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I don't need to. Yes? Well, what do you know? Another lie. Of course he needs to lie. He can't admit that there is an unsubstantiated claim in the Quran and this is just a fairy tale. So, he lies. All he does is continue with his approach of ignoring his own claim and frantically trying to pin some burden of proof on the other guy. At all cost, no matter what. And he's too stupid to realize this would not make any difference anyway. It would just be a waste of time. You know, the list in, in Abydos in no way whatsoever affects the claims in the Quran that are being propagated by Shabir. Because there's no Pharaoh mentioned there, so you can't verify anything anyway. You're not going to, I'll tell you what you're not going to do. You're not going to try and bamboozle the situation. So let's deal with the actual claim, and then let's go to the counterclaim. Okay, I'm so glad. That's well, now Shabir is down and out and desperately tries to flip it by having Sarah having to explain something, making it look as though Sarah made a claim. Yet, if you go back to the beginning of the conversation, we can clearly hear it is about the claim of the Quran. It's just another lie by Shabir. He claims that Sarah asked him. No, he did not. That's a lie. And unless and until you have all the necessary evidence available to be able to establish whether this event occurred or not, you would have to hold your judgment on it. In consequence, you hold your second, I'm also, holding it. Now, I'm you, so you hold your judgment I'm on the Moses story. I'm holding my judgment on the Moses story. One second, you hold on the Moses story, I'm holding my judgment. But now, I so you don't believe it? Do you see? What's belief got to do with whether you are holding something? To be stupid. <laughs> I, I can't get over this. How ignorant do you have to be to say something like that? You can't say something is a historical fact and say you don't know whether it happened. You, you simply can't. But Shabir does exactly that. Not, I mean, it's not just here, where, but you know, in every single conversation he has had in his videos, you only need to wait for the moment where he switches it around by lying about something and you're done. But he packages his lies neatly in innocuous sentences, so most people who are not trained to analyze will not pick this up. It is his standard operating mode and does it every single time. That's all he does in every video that I've seen him in. He, all, he only lies and deceives. And a huge number of Muslims love him for exactly that. But. Sarah spots it and is not confused, as Shabir says. Quite the contrary, he is wide awake and is one of the few who immediately spots the desperate attempt of Shabir trying to avoid providing evidence for his claims. And then the lies continue because Shabir looks like a, like a monkey trying to jump on Sarah's shoulder by now, getting closer and closer as though this somehow affects the veracity of his ludicrous claims. I'm holding 
holding judgment on it until. Nah, but that's a lie, though. One second. Wait, wait a minute. No, but that's actually a lie. One second. You're, you're standing here lying. One second. You don't withhold judgment on the Moses story in the Quran. Did I interject when you spoke? You don't. No, because I'm not going to allow you to stand here and lie for the sake of argument. You're trying to lie for the sake of argument. You can't lie for the sake of argument. I think Sarah actually slipped up here. He, he did not just make a claim regarding the list in Abydos, but stated a fact. It exists. It is demonstrable. It lists the names of the Egyptian kings. There is evidence for this. It's a fact. This is historical. And it's true because it compares with reality. It's not a claim. And Shabir tries to find some way of now getting some sort of evidence out of this. Once again shows what a charlatan and dishonest outright creepy and deceptive person he is. Totally untrustworthy, a hypocrite and a bigot. Trying to verify a name on that list is actually utter nonsense and futile since neither the Torah nor the Quran mentions any name of a pharaoh. So what would Shabir verify this against? He has no clue what hieroglyphs are. He doesn't know what a verification process could look like. So I would have shown him to be the uneducated fool he is and ask, what verification of what he would like, how and why. Now, when asked to substantiate the claim made in the Quran, Shapir makes a claim of his own, also unrelated, useless and wrong. Just as far as the court of law is concerned, you have actually confused the civil and criminal element. But... No, he has not. That is just a lie. Zara has simply stated that in the court of law you make a claim and then provide the evidence for your claim. There is no criminal or civil element here. And now, the next claim by Shabir is crucial, and Sarah somehow, I think, missed it. I am saying to you, okay, let's hold judgment on the basis of the reasoning you apply, that we don't have evidence for it, okay? Apart from what the Quran says. Because that is another huge lie right here. The Quran is not evidence. It does not matter what it says in the book. It is a claim. What is decisive is what the evidence says. And it says, nope, nobody here by that name. But that is exactly how Shabir slips these things in. He buries you in words and then includes these snippets. And that's what you need to look out for. He's a charlatan and every word is suspicious and requires scrutiny. He lies and deceives without scruples for brownie points. So you need to be wide awake and watch for this. Listen to what you just said. You said you're withholding judgment, and that's a lie. Because you don't withhold judgment on the Moses story. You actually, just like the guy that was here, you say the Quran is evidence. Yes or no? Okay. Of everything in it. Okay, yes. yes. Ta-da, surprise. So, Sarah did not miss it. He just did not show any visible reaction to this. Now, this guy, I mean, he's wide awake and catches Shabia lying red-handed again. He caught the bait and switch Shabia so frequently employs and calls him out, showing what a dishonest, deceptive person and charlatan the Shabia a character, what he actually is. And he nails him down and does not accept any of the usual evasive tactics until Shabia has to admit. I am, I am deciding the Quran being evidence for anything that is contained within the Quran. Okay. And that is instant death for any future debates or conversations. He is now useless for any non-Muslim because he has just admitted he will lie and deceive just to protect his Quran. Just because the book says so, it doesn't make it true. Right. I agree. I am, I am deciding the Quran being evidence for anything that is contained within the Quran. Okay. And Sarah can't believe what he has just heard and makes Shapir repeat, and he does, cementing his defeat. Sarah now quite correctly points out that Shabir is a huge compulsive liar and finishes him off elegantly. So you've been here lying and then you try to make an argument around the actual lie is what you've actually tried to do. No, not you tried to, that's what you have done. So like I said to you before, you can eloquently say nonsense and that's what you've been doing. That's what you've been doing. So I'm telling you I'm too smart for that. I just broke down what you've just been doing. You've been lying here for the past 10 minutes. So when you make the claim of that evidence being the Moses story and the Pharaoh and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm telling you 
if you say that happened, that's what you say, that happened. You don't say, oh, we uphold judgment of it happening. You say, that happened. We go to Pharaoh. We go to Egypt. We go to the Nile Valley. And we don't see any evidence of that happening. Now, instead of accepting defeat and walking away, Shabir decides to save his pitiful Oz and lie some more. Is that a surprise by now? Now he's just realized that Sarah does not know the Islamic text and now simply ignores everything he's previously said because he can see it's getting him nowhere and now makes up stuff about the contents of the Quran. Does the Quran say you should establish the veracity of the Quran? The Quran actually tells us, okay, go in, go and seek the necessary information. Mm -hmm. okay? No, it does not. This is another lie by Shabir. But would it change anything about his previous lies? No, of course not. I mean, even if the Quran would command people to check the facts, why are these false claims made in the first place? What if people find that the Quran is wrong? That mountains are not like pigs and corpses don't get up when hit with a piece of steak and ants can't really talk? then you get doubt and that is not allowed. Now would it, as he now claims, change anything about his multiple lies? No, he is and remains a deceitful wimp, a pathological liar. And here we have it in colour and sound and no matter how often his crone is right to me, please bitch slap without yawning, this, this PBWY. And always hilarious, P, 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 B, please bitch slap without yawning, hilarious, bring evidence, hilarious, unbelievably stupid. No, the Quran never asks the followers to verify something, quite the opposite. It tells the followers not to ask questions about anything. So his claim is a false claim. Is to hold the judgment, listen, hold the judgment until you do find it. Now, as a consequence, now, listen, I, I know you are going to find it very hard to accept, but the Quran verifies what I am saying. No, it does not. That's, <laughs> sorry, just another lie. I read something from the Quran, and the Quran verifies what I'm reading. Come on, what an idiot. Circular reasoning much? What an unbelievable silly fool. That, hey, there's no problem. If I am holding judgment on whether the event mentioned is true or not, there's no problem because I'm going to base it on the evidence available. He again starts his lies. And I'm actually sick and tired of saying this. He repeats the entire story, making his stupid claim without any evidence and tries to get Sarah to provide evidence for his counterclaim which at this time is completely unreasonable, as no event as yet has been established. And on top of that... Well, actually, no, it isn't. You made a claim, now you are lying that it is not clear. No. He, Shabir, <laughs> now accuses Sarah of lying, which is actually quite, quite outrageous. I mean, it's a childish, simple, knee-jerk reaction. It's unfounded and... Thoroughly stupid is pathetic. No, simply accusing Sarah of lying is another lie. So, no, Sarah is neither confused nor taken in by the lies and sly tactics of this little fool. He very clearly points out the confusion of Shabir and his total inability of addressing the issue, demonstrating the incompetence of this apologist. All of Shabir's, I am so glad you said this, and with respect and sincerely and pb hilarious this can't save him he's just been horribly exposed and he knows it and in his desperation he goes to the apologetics 101 safe space you need to look at the entire quran and use the context <laughs> oh boy and he tries to shift the burden of proof on the reader of the quran discumbering logical and fact-based arguments what an asshole! Really, he says the Quran makes a claim and then tells the reader to go and seek the evidence for the claim. Does the Quran say this? No, of course not. It's just another lie. And this is unbelievably stupid because, you know, 
I don't believe. The Quran says slapping a corpse with a piece of steak revives it. Now I need to believe this because I have not yet killed every single cow to verify whether this particular cow can provide the piece of steak which can revive a corpse. Come on. But that is how stupid this Shabir guy is. He can't... I mean, he realizes he can't play his usual game and, and gets frustrated. And because he's not so well equipped in the intelligence section, he can't adapt to the situation. He's helpless and desperate. It's actually entertaining to see how many tricks, emotional tricks, that is. He, he pulls out of the bag and tries to throw Sara off balance and fails miserably. So he repeats his lies some more and simply babbles. But this is where most Muslims give up and allow Shabir to walk away and think he made a point. They have been inundated with this waterfall of words and twists and turns, deception and lies, and um, they're simply worn out. Not so, Sarah, my man. Cool as a cucumber, even after 45 minutes, he throws it right back at Shabir. And Shabir does not have a leg to stand on. You just said, I said you can eloquently say nonsense. And what you've been doing, this whole conversation is eloquently saying nonsense, my friend. Now, Sarah simply tells Shabir he's been talking shit all this time. Albeit eloquently, but without substance. Well, here's the summary and the gist of the matter. And I'm telling you, you cannot, and it cannot be done. You cannot say you withhold judgment. Hang on. You cannot withhold judgment, right? And you cannot say something is a fact at the same time. Now, you say everything in the Quran is a fact, yes, as a Muslim, yes? Yes. So then how can you now say you withhold judgment on the Moses story? That is a contradiction. You're saying you have to go out and seek it, right? To verify the story. Problem for you because the story hasn't been verified. The only place it's been verified is within the Quran. It hasn't actually been verified outside of it. So you're, are you saying you want to go outside the book to verify it? It hasn't even been verified. But yet and still, you preach the Quran as a fact. So what are you doing? You're just lying. You don't understand what you're saying. None of you here actually understand what you're saying. But you're going to stay with, but you're going to stay with him like he does. And we're slowly getting to the end now. What is even more inconvenient for Shabir is that another Muslim barges in and declares he will believe the words of the Quran whether they are reflected in reality or not. That is what a Muslim has to do. He has to believe whether they are true or not which is the only honest approach you can have as a Muslim. One which this obsessive liar Shabir will never practice or even consider. He even goes and declares Sarah clueless of what? Of the contents of the Quran, a claim never even touched on. This is dishonest Shabir at work. What is amazing is that after all this treachery, he still tries to get all Pally pally and shake hands, which Sarah quite rightfully rejects. Now, anyone wishing to engage with the charlatan should watch the exchange between this Shabir and Sarah and see what a pathetic, feeble little wimp this is. There's no need to talk to this guy anymore, as his true character has been exposed and everyone can see the futility of any kind of exchange with this pitiful, useless jerk. I apologize for missing a few pejorative attributes. Now, if anyone does anyway, I hope they see this video first to prepare them for what they will experience and what to watch out for. And in a later comment, by the way, then, then Sarah had this to say, which sums it up perfectly. You don't withhold judgment. You say that story happened because it was in the Quran. So he's saying, no, 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 I, can, I withhold judgment about the story of Moses. I said, you're lying. Because you tell people the Quran's a fact, yes? Yes. So if it's a fact, that means the story of Moses did actually happen then. That's what you're saying. You can't withhold. If I go to the court of law and say, Your Honor, this murder happened. Did it happen? I don't know, Your Honor. I withhold judgment. But it happened. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I said, the two things can't exist within the same realm. He's telling me, yes, they can. I'm telling you, the man stood here and lied for the past half an hour. And we didn't even get an answer. We didn't even get an answer. He lied. He, he eloquently rushed around the question, rushed around, avoided the answer, and, and said it. But I said, you can eloquently say nonsense all you want, but you haven't answered what's... The main, the main problem that. The guy is... Hopefully I'll put that up and I'll do it for he's a, That guy's a charlatan. Because he uses what's called he's channeling questions. He's actually a charlatan. Channeling questions. I totally agree. So this guy 
Shabir does not deserve any of the attention he gets and should be dismissed as a liar and a nutcase. And that is a verifiable fact. Thanks for your time. Oh, and P.S. If you, you know, just for fun, want to see a really puzzled little fellow who can't grasp any of what Zara is saying, watch the video with a guy called Ali Dawa. A hopelessly deluded and ignorant guy. And it's Zara versus Ali Dawa and br oh, brother Mohammed. I think he's the gay guy. What do you believe in? Speaker's Corner. And he's, he's joined by this other guy. And both are completely flabbergasted and demonstrate the level of ignorance and inability to follow logics and concepts. Absolutely hilarious how frantic they get. I mean, they get closer and closer, touch and fondle this poor Sarah, and all he uses is logics. Beautiful. Okay, bye guys. See you next time.